Alright, hey guys. Hey guys. How are you guys doing? You guys hear me okay? You guys hear me okay? If you hear me okay, uh, comment below, let me know. All right, so today I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about there's uh, three different, three steps that you, you gotta understand so you can improve your overhead, which is the backhand side. Many people were struggling with this, either the middle courts or the back courts. And then if you did these three steps I teach you, then your overhead, this attack, which is a smash, will get much stronger, get much stronger, all right? Okay. So, first thing I want to talk about, the first step, today I'm gonna to talk about there's a two different spots, all right? One is at the half court, the other one is at the overhead, okay? So, for the first thing I'm gonna talk about is at the, middle courts here. Many people, especially if you play doubles, if you play doubles, then opponent sometimes you push your shot a little bit flat, not that high, so you won't have the time to turn your upper body, right? So how you gonna do, you just what you're going to do is like this, and I'm gonna break it down step by step. Okay, break it down step by step toward to you. So you can let your smash angle be more accurate and also be more like sharp. All right, so the first, the first step you need to understand is your left foot if you are righty. All right, so if you are lefty, you gotta move focus on your right foot, okay? Because I'm righty, so I'm more focused on my left, left foot. If a shot is coming here and a little bit flat, not that high, the first step is good. You guys are gonna step like this, and you shift your weight, you shift your weight to your left side. Okay, at the same time, your racket gotta hold it up because the shot is, if you're not holding it up fast enough, the shot will pass you very easily. So how you're gonna do is like this. You shift to the, to the side way, and you rake it up a little bit like this. That's the first step you need to understand. Shift your weight to the side, which is on the left side if I righty, on the right side if I if I lefty. Okay. So after you step, right? You, right now you shift it. You shift your weight to the to the left side or right side. You shift your weight already. What you're going to do is so you're going to. You either do one shuffle or you just jump out. So let me let me show you how it looks like. Alright? You either just jump it out or you do one more shuffle and jump out. Okay, usually how to measure this, how you measure see off, how far should you jump? It depends on the shot. But what I would recommend if you don't do uh with the shuttles, which is you practice uh, footwork, how you going to do the distance is around when you land it, you either left foot, if I lefty, it's a right foot, gotta at least, at this step on, step on the single slide. Step on the single slide. Okay, so either, so how it looks like you, it looks like this. You're gonna, you're gonna be like, it looks like this way. Okay, so you're gonna be one shuffle and jump up. And go back. One shuffle, jump up. Or you can just a step and jump up. Because sometimes, sometimes you won't have that much time to do that one more shuffle. To do that one more shuffle. So that's the second step. That's the second step. The first step, okay. The first step, shift your weight. The second step, your left foot generate power. You either shuffle and jump up, or you just use your left foot 
to jump up. Okay. The last step, which is the third step, it's really important. It's really important. If you not do this well, then your shot will hit the net very often. Very often. All right. So the third step is a two, a little bit like two key points that you need to understand, but almost, almost they're the same. All right. So it looks like this. When you step, your upper body like straighten up. You get a straighten up like this, but not turn your upper body. You straight it up like this way. All right. But the second thing is you need understand because what I say, you want to let your shot be more deeper and not more sharp, right? So how you're going to do is your elbow get a lift up to here. All right. So you kind of like this. It will be like this. Because sometimes your opponent, the, the shots, when they push it or lift it, the shot is kind of a little bit this angle, right? When the shot is a little bit like this angle, your upper body you kind of go like too straight, then it's tricky to hit the shot. Or sometimes you hit it, your, your record face will become like this. That's, some, that's because some of my students, when they hit it, the shot, after even they attack, the shot will go to the middle is somewhere they, they don't want to hit it, but they hit it, right? They want to hit straight down to the line, but because of the rookie face become like this, and their shot will go toward to the center. So, so you guys gotta remember this, when you step it up, and then your upper body don't keep too straight, your upper body need to go link toward to the shoulder like this way, but your elbow get to hold it up like this. Okay, you gotta go toward a little bit to this way, not just only go like this. All right, you gotta go toward to this way. And how you can generate power this shot, you gotta more focus on how sharp you hit. You gotta let your shot go more deeper. So, here's the key point. If you want that your smash be more deeper, angle go more deep, your forearm and your wrist is really important. So it's based on how fast you swing this power. If you want to go deeper, the swing motion of this motion, you got to swing faster. That's why if you, if you do have the uh, resistance band at home, then you can hold it and practice this. Or uh, some of you guys, some of you guys have a Ricky cover. I think I mentioned before, if you're Ricky cover, you guys can practice swing like this. This two exercise can also help you bring out, like speed up your form swing. Okay. Some of you guys, if you want to more how to practice, with your swing motion, how to speed up your power of your swing, you can go to my speed power programs and go to www.bamtinandbeyond.com. All right. So that's the three steps. That's summarized right here. The first step is you step, okay, step, shift your weight. The second step is your left way. You either do one shuffle and jump up or you just jump it up. The third step is you lean your body, go kind of like this, elbow up toward to here, and then speed up your forearm swing. Speed up your forearm swing. Okay, so that's the three steps you need to remember. All right, if you do this well, then you can cut off the shots Especially if you're against, let's say in doubles, I give you a scenario like this. Your partner is right in front of you, and right now your partner is doing serve, right? And sometimes the opponent will target to your backhand side if your backhand is weak. So when they receive serve, they will try to push to your backhand side. When they push to the backhand side, that's Assume that your partner, the serve, is very tight to the net. The quality is good. Let's assume that. 
then your opponent, the shot they pushed it, they either just go flat, if you go flat, you can just do the back and drive, right? But if not, the shot muscle go up a little bit, which is you can just do this, this turn it. You don't need, you don't need to like just turn that much. You can do this foot work and cut a shot off. Cut a shot off. They can speed up your rallies, increase the aggressive of your attack. All right. So that's the middle cards. And right now I'm going to give you some tips because I get so many questions about how you can increase the speed of moving to the backhand side to attack. So here's the things. The hop step is really important. So let me show you. It looks like this. You start at center, right? The first step, step with your left foot if I right knee. Okay, step with your left foot if I right knee. This step, you gotta step a little bit small step. Alright? But when you step this, the weight that you have supposed to still be on your right foot. So you kinda of like this. And you notice your upper body don't turn like this one. Okay, you move like this way. And then your right foot push, you gotta generate power. Push, generate power like this. Why did I say hop step is very really important? You can see right now my step, step, you turn. My left foot will do one hop, right? Some people, you, some people will do like this, you know, like, like when they move to the overhead side, they will go like one shuffle and turn and shuffle again. They will cause them too slow. Essentially, the back at this side. And some, some people, the first step, they will step wrong. Which is, they see the shadow, the first step, they go like, so they become a back end. They become a back end. Here's the thing I want you guys to really understand. You guys need to work on your overhead step more instead of just work on your back end clear or back end skills. You need to master your overhead skills. And then move on to master your backhand skills. Okay, some people, a lot of students will come to me and ask me the one question is about, L, how can I hit the backhand? How can I hit the backhand? So my next question is, how well you do at your overhead side? Like, right, how well you do this? And you find out a lot of things is because they don't have enough time to do this, or their footboard not familiar to do this, they call them too slow, so they need to learn how to do the back end, how to do the back end. Okay, then you need to back to how you can work on this instead of just skip to work on this and go toward to here. Right? You gotta work on the overhead step first. It's like, it's like, before you learn how to run, you need to learn how to walk first, right? To learn how to do the overhead is you, you're learning like walking, you know? And then once you speed up enough, but the shot's still like too fast because your level keep moving up, you rally fast enough. So sometimes it's overhead still not enough, right? Then you're gonna work out your backhand skills. But before that, you need to master your overhead. You need to master your overhead. All right, so back to the footboard. The first thing is step, one small step, tiny step. All right, not like, not like this. Small step. If you guys watch this video right now and you have a space, you can do with me together. You can do with me together. You can build up your muscle memory. All right, so step. And then keep your upper body straight. Make sure you don't turn this. And then right now, we're gonna generate power by your right foot. Once you generate power, you push. You push your back foot. We gotta do one hop. One hop. I do slow motion show you. One, push, hop. 
and land it. Let me show you. One, two, pop. Okay, when you land to here, you can just do scissor kick. Right. If you in the badminton accelerator programs, we have, I have talked about two different ways to move to the overhead. To move to the overhead. So if those of you want to work on your six corner footboard, basic footboard, you can go to our badminton accelerator program or footboard smoothie program. There's two programs also work on your footboard. It's different levels with the different levels. All right. Badminton accelerator, I also teach you the six corners at different shots. There's a different shots. Okay, right now for, for overhead this side, some people, they cost them, some people cost them, it's about their turning. This is a key point I want you guys to understand. The key point of the turning at the overhead side will decide how, how good quality they're gonna hit. Whether you're gonna hit drop, reverse, or clear, smash, it the turn is really important. So how you gonna do this? Is your lower body will help you to turn. It's not just only your upper body. There's uh, two parts can help you speed up your turning. One is your hip. Okay, your hip. The other one is your el elbow pull back. So look at here. You, you, you guys will, will do like this. You kind of like. Right? You get lower body push and turn. And then your upper body naturally just hold it up. Just hold it up. When you land it, the last step, when you land it, you shift your weight to the back directly. You shift your weight to the back directly. Okay, go like this. And then your right foot landed, right? Right now your right foot landed bending like this, okay? And your right foot just jump up to do the scissor kick, alternate in the air. And here's the key point. Many people after they land like this, when they move back to the center, they kind of go like this. And what will happen? If the opponent push back again, they they lose the balance right away because they go like this. It's hard to get it back. So how are you gonna move back? You're gonna do the shuffle back. You're gonna do the shuffle back like this. Not like, not like. And you go like running back. So if your opponent push to the same corner you lose the balance right away and it cause you, you going to do the back end again. But what if you do this? Like, shuffle, back, turn again. Shuffle, turn again. Shuffle. Your opponent keep pushing you, your rifle just keep generating power, turn. All right, so, Here's the one, here's the one benefit that if you do this footboard. You can measure whether this shot is out or not. If, but before you do that, I want you to understand your footboard always get to the right position, which is down to the line here. Alright, I give an example. If my step is like this, when I jump it up, I did it here. My left foot is already stepped out of line. So what does that mean? If when I jump it up, the shuttle keep flying. Do I need to keep hitting? I don't need to hit because it's out already. But it's because I guess, no, it's because I know this footwork when I step to the right position and the shadows keep flying, they will be out totally. They will be out totally. Okay? So that's the uh, three key points on the middle court and the overhead this side. And each footwork can help you 
increase the power generation because you got to get to a right position so you can generate power. If you not get to a right position, it's hard to generate more power. All right, for the uh, middle core of this side, this could help you, the swing of this, you can do more, so you can see elbow and not drop it down like this, especially the middle core here, the cutoff shot, this forehand, could it be like this. All right, so that's the three sets. That's the three sets. I know there's some information. I believe you guys will watch this video again and again and again in order to improve your middle cutoff shots and overhead shots and overhead shots. All right, so back to questions. If you guys have any questions, let me know. For those of you who haven't, for those of you who haven't joined the Ba uh, badminton accelerator program or foot or smoothie I have left in the link in the description you guys click it and we yesterday we launched out the, the cross shots the cross shots program the cross shots program I teach you all the six to eight basic shots how you can hit your cross with the high quality with the high quality so your your strategy, your games will be more varieties. Will be more varieties. All right, all right. So back to questions. All right, let's see. Oh, okay. Uh, some people on Instagram here. What's your? All right, David. So David, for for the grip that you hold it, when you do the smash for the grip. You can hold either forehand grip or hammer grip. Hammer grip, hammer grip can make your Ricky face be more a little bit flat. Yeah, either hammer grip or forehand grip. Forehand grip, some, some of my students, I ask them to do more forehand grip. The index finger can help them to generate more power. But hammer grip, which is it can make your Ricky face be more flat. So if you find every time you smash that you hit it, always slice, slice, slice. You can try to hold a hammer grip. You try to hold a hammer grip. All right. So, okay, next questions. Okay. So here's the questions. I'm seeing what I can ask. So, okay, so here's a singles player's questions. Get into position by doing overhead foot or from middle, from middle courts and cannot jump properly. Yeah, so, so uh, it's Richard, re right? So basically it's this two, this two foot work. One is the step middle courts and the overhead to help you get to your right position. This will help you to get to your right position. All right. Improve. Oh, okay. So people will ask me like, how, how you guys can improve the, the power of your either the like smash or something like that. Here's the things, the, 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 the three, three things you need to do. You need to work on your strengths, that's for sure. And the basic, if for those of you who want to work on your smash and work on harder, then I would recommend you guys the simple exercise you guys can do right now. I mean, like right now, you guys even watch the YouTube, you guys can do right now. It's your push ups. Push ups can really work on your power. Okay, that's, that's a strength. I mean, like physically, for power generation, they also in, increase. Uh, the skills requirement, right? Request. So you kind of like this. When for the skills, you need to remember before you hit it, you always need to relax. And you only generate the power at last moments, kind of like snap. 
That's why I built up the speed power program, which is I teach you the swing motion with the rake cover, because this is all can help you improve, improve your power generation. All right, with the properly swing will help you improve your power generation. And then you guys need to improve and learn how to relax before you hit the shadows, before you hit the shot. A lot of people, when they see, when they see the shadow, they go, they go like this, right? They want to hit harder, but it turns out at the end, the shots not get the heart, not get the heart. Before you hit it, your upper body be more relaxed, fle flexible, and then bam, at last moment. All right, so here's the one more one more thing I want you guys to work on. Not a lot of people will talk about this. It's about your coordination. The more coordinate, the more upper body and lower body you can coordinate very well, the more power you can generate. And how you guys can work on your coordination, that's very simple. That's very simple. You guys need to work on the skipping. Or, or this is a simple exercise, right? Simple exercise. One simple exercise, this is work on your coordination. This is all work on your coordination. Coordinate your upper body and lower body is really important because sometimes your lower body doesn't need to move that fast, but your upper body needs to swim faster. Sometimes your lower body need to move fast and your upper body don't need to swim that fast. So you gotta coordinate very well. For those of you who have like, if you gotta move fast and every time you go there, you also swing hard and you, you, you couldn't be able to control. That's a coordination and you need to work on that. You need to work on that. That will help you generate more power, more power. But here's the thing, gotta practice consistently. Practice, practice and practice. All right, that's a good question. Okay, so Azul, you say, how to train for a relax before swim? Mental or physical training? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, it, it, it reminds me when I was like uh, very young, my coach keep asking me, relax, relax, relax. And I have same question as you, like how? How can I practice relax? Okay, how can I practice relax? And it turns out there's one thing. I give you an example. You guys think about this. Let's see. Uh, right now, you don't know how to play how to play guitar, right? You don't know how to play guitar. And I ask you to get a guitar. Right now, your your emotion will become very stiff, right? Why? There's only one thing. It's because you're not familiar with that and you, your muscle not work on that way. So you don't have any muscle memory to do that thing. And how are you gonna build up that? The more you practice, the more muscle memory you have, the more tips and the more time you can be able to relax. That's the reason, I give an example. For most, a lot of people, when they upper body feel too stiff or nervous when they defense. How many of you guys have this question, this problems? Like, if you defense the first shot, it's okay, but the second shot, your opponent keep attacking, your upper body starts to become very stiff. How many of you guys have these questions? Give me a thumbs up if you have this question. All right, yeah, that's good. So that, that, that's the reason. That's the reason you need to practice what? Remember the, the first time when I do a live stream? I say, then you gotta work on your wall hit. Wall hit is, looks like you're against your opponent. But the more practice you do this, your emotion will become more smooth and relaxed because your muscle memory start to build it up that way, right? But if you, if you not work on this a lot, every time your opponent hit to you, your emotion will get very tight. And then when you practice, you can keep remind yourself, relax, 
you snap, relax, snap, relax, snap, relax. It's only like this. That's for mentally, mentally, for sure they have a skills, right? So we talk about a lot of defense skills, smash skills, net shot, like like tons of the skills we talk about, right? So we talk about those skills. Then you work on that skills for mentally. You need to you need to work on what I just say. Keep working on and remind yourself: relax, generate power, relax, generate power. No rush. The more rush you have, you want to hit harder. The less power you will generate. All right. Yeah, that's a good question. I like that as a. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so for those of you who have like your upper body get very stiff, ninety percent or even ninety nine percent, especially do the fast rally, then then you gotta work on your muscle memory. And if you don't know how to practice in my programs, I teach you a lot of how you can practice and what you need to focus on. Okay, what you need to focus on, and it's it's seventeen seventeen to twenty seven bucks. You can get it for a lifelong access. You can watch again, 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 and I'm with you to teach you. Okay, and every week I'm on YouTube to give you the answer. If you take the program, for those of you who have a program, so you take it. Then you have a question when you take the programs. Then you can just ask me when I do a live stream. I will answer you right away. Okay. So, uh, Praveen. I feel like I less power when I smash from forehand deep corner. Then when I smash from around head into a backhand side. Okay, so for a forehand this side, forehand this side, there's one thing we have in the footwork program. I talk about the China jump and the scissor kick. You do either both footwork, it doesn't matter. It's all good. But you need to make sure the abs gotta help you to rotate this power. You can't just only do this with this. You gotta rotate your upper body. You gotta rotate your upper body. Two two things you can improve your power generation when you do the smash. Okay, one is your hip gotta rotate this part, your abs, and generate power. That's why for athlete we need to work on the sit ups. We need to work on our abs. Because we need to, the power is almost is turned by this, by your abs. All right, this is really important. The second thing, you, uh, some of the players they forget about their elbow lead it out. Okay, so you kind of like when they smash, they will go like this, and they will, sometimes they will cause it. If you injure your shoulder at this part, maybe your motion something wrong with this. You got elbow lead it up. Okay, elbow lead it up like this. It's a good question. I like that. Hey, Jack. Oh, Harris. Hello, hello. Okay, I'm gonna bring up. Uh, we. I'm gonna bring out the last questions. The last questions. All right, bring out the last questions. Okay. Uh, after then, that for the grip I just mentioned, uh, for the grip that I just mentioned, when you do the smash, if you slice, you want to hit more cleaner, you can dare to try do the hammer grip with the hammer grip. In my grip, uh, in my grip videos, I've, I've showed there's uh, four different grips. If you don't know what those four different grips, then you could go to watch that. Four different grip, they, there's a hammer grip, Forehand grip, backhand grip, and the bevel grip. All right. All right. That's. Okay. So. So, today, these three sets, I hope you guys can implement in your games. And for those of you, again, for those of you who haven't taken any programs from me for the. Uh, the Bampton Accelerator, Foot or Smoothie, or Quad Shots, and Speed Power, which is increase your speed and the power generation, is all on my website. It's, I put the links at bamptonandbeyond.com. 
badmintonandbeyond.com. You can go to www.badmintonandbeyond.com. Okay, and I put the links in the YouTube. I put the link into the YouTube. For Instagram, those of you guys haven't go to watch my YouTube yet, you can go to, there's a tons of contents over there. Okay, so next week, I will see you guys the same time. And uh, next week, I'm gonna talk about more with the game strategy. For those of you who want me to answer a question, you can leave in the comment, leave in the comment, or you have some uh, question about you want me to make a content for you, leave in the comments and I'll review your comments and I'll answer you and maybe I'll make a video for you. Okay. All right. So thank you guys. I'll see you guys next, next week. See you guys. Bye.